55 years ago, military tanks took to the streets of Brasilia. The military were conducting a coup d'etat, which inaugurated what would be a 21-year dictatorship. On January 1, 2019, once again Brasilia saw military tanks on the streets, but for a whole different reason. They were guarding the city for the inauguration of Jair Bolsonaro, the new president of Brazil. For the first time in decades, a military man will occupy Brazil's highest office, this time through democratic means. Elected in October 2018 by 55% of voters, Bolsonaro will now lead Brazil for the next four years. Prometo manter, defender e cumprir a Constituição. My name is Gustavo Ribeiro, editor-in-chief of the Brazilian Report, and this is Explaining Brazil. We'd like to wish our listeners a happy new year, and we begin 2019 talking about the inauguration of Jair Bolsonaro, which took place on the New Year's Day. E Deus acima de todos! <laughs> Today's podcast is not being recorded from our studios in São Paulo, but rather from Brasilia, the Brazilian capital. For foreigners, it seems odd to schedule a presidential inauguration on the very first day of the year, but it wasn't always like that. As a matter of fact, it was the 1988 constitution that placed the beginning of the presidential term on January the 1st. Prior to the change, presidents took office mid-March. There were two reasons for doing that. One, to bring the inauguration closer to the election, and two, to limit the outgoing president's power over his successor's budget. So without further ado, let's talk about the first moments of the Jair Bolsonaro presidency. I'm joined by reporter Rafael Ferreira, who was at the ministry's esplanade and covered the entire inauguration ceremony up close for the Brazilian report. Hi, Rafael. Hello, Gustavo. Hello, everyone. Rafael, this was the most heavily guarded inauguration in Brazilian democratic history. So, how exactly was the security system set up? To a certain degree, the enhanced security measures were understandable, as Jair Bolsonaro was the target of an assassination attempt by stabbing a few months ago. However, it was overwhelming, over the top, harmed the ability for the press to cover the event, over 6,000 security agents were on the site, ground to air missiles were put on standby, four checkpoints were, in, were installed alongside the ministry's esplanade to search the audience, plastic bottles, backpacks, baby strollers, umbrellas were banned. Unfortunately, I'm a smoker and even my lighter was banned, even though it was not within the official list of banned items, so I had to throw it away at one of the checkpoints. Journalists that needed to cover parts of the inauguration ceremony that happened within Congress or the Ministry of Foreign Affairs were for all intents and purposes kept captive for hours with no food, no chairs and no access to any authorities for interviews. Um, some journalists placed outside were also told that any sudden moves with their cameras or any attempt to jump over the iron fences used to separate different sectors of the crowd could put them at risk of being shot by snipers. And at least according to some reports, journalists could also be banned from interviewing people from the crowd. What about you? How did you get around? So I decided to carry my stuff in a transparent plastic bag and to wear an identification badge only when interviewing people. That way interviewees would, uh, could see that I was there working and at the same time I managed to stay embedded within the audience without being noticed by security forces. And what did you see? What kinds of characters attended the inauguration and where did they come from? People from all over the country came by bus, by car, by plane, driving motorhomes. I saw him at uh, men and women from all ages, races and backgrounds. So I would say that the crowd, the crowd was diverse, but with certain things in common, such as religiosity and conservative values. 
um, we keep we have to keep in mind that the federal capital is not considered a hot destination for New Year's Eve, and yet pretty much all hotels in the city were full of people that came from distant places such as the Amazon region and the far south of the country. So the audience was indeed of the more enthusiastic partisan kind. I met people that voted for the left in previous elections but decided to vote for Jair Bolsonaro because of cultural wars and economic anxiety, and now they loathe anything that could be remotely associated with left-wing discourse. I met evangelical Christians who saw in him a defender and an enabler of conservative Christian movements. I saw black men and women cheering for him, even though he was he has been accused of uh, saying racist remarks in the past. I talked to women from, from poor areas of the country who were fully embracing Jair Bolsonaro's crusade against the so-called political correctness, men wearing the colors of the Brazilian flag screaming enthusiastically against socialism. In many ways, it seemed like people that went to the inauguration felt vindicated by Bolsonaro's victory and wanted to take a public stance, not only against pr uh, previous leftist administrations, but also against all the criticism that was ventilated in mainstream discourse um, concerning his radical stance on social issues. So they actually share many of his views. President Bolsonaro gave two inaugural speeches, one addressing Congress and the other one addressing the people who went there. Officially, 115,000 people. Those were pretty aggressive speeches. He talked about enemies of the state, uh, reading Brazil from socialism and political correctness. I mean, it was not so much as he was extending an olive branch for the opposition. How did the crowd react to his speech? His speech to the audience was very partisan, saying that the Brazilian flag would never be red and ranting against the so-called gender ideology, which is uh, pretty much a dog whistle for anti-feminism and anti-LGBT militancy. So the crowd seemed very pleased. It didn't feel like an attempt to unite the country, though. It remains to be seen whether he will be able to reconcile current political divisions and polarizations in Brazil with this sort of rhetoric. Rafael, you were there from early in the morning until the very end of the inauguration ceremony. What do you take from this experience? What marked you the most about the reaction of the crowd and the relationship between the new president and his supporters? I think that uh, probably since Lula, um, I, I haven't seen this sort of visceral connection between the political representative and uh, his constituency in Brazil. It's uh, something that feels very new. It's uh, a constituency that is very much energized. They feel that the president uh, not only represents the social policies and the economic policies that they want to see uh, put in place, but they also think that he represents them in a visceral way, uh, sort of like in an identitarian uh, sphere, I guess. So they were there not only to cheer him up, uh, but also to uh, take a stance against whatever they feel is under attack, uh, either uh, their uh, economic ability to survive, uh, since we've been through economic crises and political crises uh, over the years, uh, or conservative uh, family values due to uh, perhaps a few advancements, a few social advancements that uh, took place over the years. So what marked me the most was this uh, very personal relation towards politics, which is something that I haven't seen since Lula. And perhaps uh, this time it feels a little bit more over the top. There are certainly big expectations from Jair Bolsonaro's voters. Polls show that 65% of Brazilians believe that his administration were, will either be good or great, but with great expectations can come great disappointment. So do you think that uh, the connection between Jair Bolsonaro and his voters uh, will remain no matter what, or does the new president need to show uh, quick results and a quick fix for the economy uh, for that support to endure? My guess is that 
uh, the vast majority of people that voted for him want to see results fast because let's uh, let's be honest uh, Brazil does need a shakeup we we have endured economic crises we ha we still have a high unemployment rate um, violence is widespread corruption scandals uh, have tarnished the image that Brazil has of itself so my guess is the vast majority of people uh, do want to see results fast and I think that would will have but we also have to keep in mind that a, a a considerable uh, part of his voters is very much radicalized. I think we've seen this phenomenon before in other parts of the world. People are fed up with mainstream politicians, and you know, uh, so they're looking for um, looking for a savior. So I guess there's a big part of his uh, constituency which is uh, not so much concerned with concrete results, but with winning cultural wars on social media, attacking the press, attacking the opposition, and so on. But if, if we consider the vast majority of people who voted for him, I would say that they are expecting results because Brazil does need uh, positive results. Without a doubt, there will be no shortage of challenges for this new administration. But leaving the new president aside for a bit, I'd like to focus on his wife, First Lady Michelle Bolsonaro, for now. She was responsible for one of the inauguration's most emotional moments. She delivered her speech in sign language, which was read by an interpreter. A todos aqueles que se sentem esquecidos, vocês serão valorizados e terão seus direitos respeitados. Tenho esse chamado no meu coração e desejo contribuir na promoção do ser humano. How did the crowd react to that moment? Yes, uh, Michele Bolsonaro's speech impacted the audience in a very positive way. Uh, she uh, was seen as someone which puts simplicity and dialogue first, which is interesting uh, due to the political climate that we're living in. So uh, her speech was very much impactful. Uh, it was kind. And it, the fact that it was uh, the first time that a first lady makes a speech and it happened before the president's speech, I think that had an impact, a positive impact, uh, not only for the crowd, but also for uh, Brazilians in general, I think. That's, uh, that's, what I, that's my opinion. And um, the fact that it happens in sign language, she has uh, a history of addressing uh, the rights, uh, fighting for the rights of people with disabilities. So it all felt very coherent and kind, a positive impact uh, also for Jair Bolsonaro's image. Now the real work starts. Jair Bolsonaro will have four years to show what he's capable of, and we will be here covering his administration. Rafael, thank you very much for joining us. Congratulations on your job covering the inauguration and Happy New Year. Thank you very much. Happy New Year. If you like this podcast, please take a look at our website. It's Brazilian.report. Every day we have new content about Brazilian politics, finance and society. We've also got exclusive newsletter services if you want to be briefed about what's going on in Brazil before starting your day. Subscribe now to our free trial and enjoy all of our content for 14 days. And it's really free, you don't have to submit any credit card information whatsoever. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter or handle us at Brazilian Report. That's all for now, see you next week. Mm -hmm.